Copies coming, just attorney Jones. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> the meeting, East Chicago County Council, public hearing and regular meeting for Wednesday, July 13, 2022. Please stand for pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the government, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Second District Councilman Lenny Francisco. President. Third District Councilman Terrence Hill. Here. Fourth District Councilwoman Stacy Whitby. Fifth District Councilman Robert Garcia. Present. Sixth District Councilwoman Gilda Orange. <clears throat> oh, present. Councilman at Large Deborah Palanda. Here. Councilman at Large Dwayne Ransford. Councilman at Large, Kenneth Monroe. Present. Council President, Monica Gonzalez. Here. Our first thing on the agenda is a public hearing and um, for ordinance 220031, it's on for a public hearing. Attorney on the did you have something to say? Actually, this this ordinance was defeated, so I guess there may not be a much of a reason to have the public here. Sure, sure. So if you're withdrawing the, well, I just don't think there's since we can't the additional appropriation ordinance is not going to be considered. There's no reason to receive public comment on something that you're not going to consider. Okay, it's my own. I defer to Sister Jones. Correct. No reason for a public hearing. Okay. Our next public hearing. Medina, can you please read it? Ordinance 22-0032, sponsor Mayor Anthony Copeland, Councilman Lenny Francisco, Councilwoman Gilda Warren. Additional appropriations ordinance. Appropriating certain monies received from the local fiscal recovery fund for payment of additional premium pay to eligible city employees designated as essential workers. Well, you know, I would you know, a lot of uh, This um, ordinance uh, is on the agenda for third reading, past first and, past first and second reading last. Um, yeah, uh, it's uh, the additional appropriation is in the sum of $1.6 million. Companion to this ordinance is a, uh, a resolution amending the uh, Rescue uh, Rescue Act plan to include the, this um, premium pay program for 2022. Um, and that uh, resolution uh, specifies the participants and the level and to the extent that the city employees will will um, participate, based on our last conversation, the conversations we had the last time, I think there was a meeting. Uh, council persons and and the uh, and the administration, whereby um, some consensus was reached about the additional persons, specifically the uh, employees and contract vendors for the, in the health department that would be included. That, that is contained uh, in the resolution that I believe the council will be taking up under resolution. 
Okay, is everybody on the street for against it? Just the resolution I just handed out. It'll be added on the for the agenda today. Yes, sir. No one here to speak for against or against two two zero zero three two. I'm hearing this folks. Regular meeting. Minutes of council meetings. We have none available at this time. Communication from the mayor. I have none. Communication from department heads. Counts payable warrants 062022 CC 070622 CC 071322 CC and 071322LA. Second. second. Motion made by Councilman Orange, seconded by Councilman Monroe. Thank you. Any questions? Roll call, please. Francesca? Yes. Hill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Garcia? No. Orange? Yes. Bolaño? Yes. Bradshaw? Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Payroll. Warrant by weekly 062422-070822. Payroll warrant miscellaneous 062422. And payroll warrant monthly 070122. So move, Madam President. Second. Motion made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Long. Any questions? Roll call, please. Francisco. Yes. Bill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Bolaño. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalo. Yes. Are there any committee reports? Any board reports? Ordinances on first reading. Ordinance 22-0033. Sponsor Mayor Anthony Cook. Appropriations Ordinance. TIF Lakefront Allocated Area 2 Fund 4451. Motion made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilwoman Orange. Yes, sir. Um, if I may, uh, Joe Allegretti, Law Department. Uh, this earlier this year, uh, Councilman Garcia, the, uh, the city issued $1.6 million in economic development revenue bonds, also known as SIP bonds, approved by the, by the Common Council. Bonds were purchased by the developer, uh, Chrome LLC, which you know to be uh, William Mars. Um, in the terms of an economic development agreement, which and I conferred with attorney, as I said, attorney Jones on this. Um, the city pledged 75% of the um, tax increment revenues generated uh, from the increase in the assessed valuation of the property after the investment by Mr. Marsh to pay debt service on the bonds. Mr. Marsh bought the, bought the bond, a $1.62 million bond, $54,050. In the in this appropriation ordinance, it is the um, is, represents the seventy five percent that was pledged by the city uh, from the incremental tax revenue uh, for indicated bonds, and that's typically what we do. We, we uh, the county gives us the money, we we segregate the the amount owed, and we after it's appropriated by the common council, we write them a check, and that's that's what this housekeeping uh, appropriation ordinance is all about. Any questions? Roll call, please. Francisco. Yes. Bill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Bolaño. Yes. 
Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Motion to suspend the rules. The motion to suspend the rules by Councilman Garcia. Joe, I, I think this, is it? this one, I believe, still needs a public or is it since it's already earmarked, it probably needs one. It's been already earmarked in the prior agreement. So that's the only. To be safe. I yeah, let, safe let's have a public yes. hearing on it because we're not 100% sure it was earmarked in the agreement, but it is another appropriation. So. Well, thank you, Councilman. Next, uh, ordinance on first reading. <clears throat> ordinance 22-0034, Mayor Anthony additional appropriations ordinance for the department, special event. Made um, by Councilman Hill, seconded by Councilwoman Orange for first and second reading for 220034. Um, so this first one, so um, for this particular ordinance, what we're intending to do is for some of the events that we already have in motion, we need to uh, do some housekeeping. Uh, some of the events that we've already had, if there are things that we see that we need to add to, um, mostly to ensure um, better security for lack of a better term. So, um, or, you know, for the pest control and um, the police actually, for several of them have more police and more security guards at the event. Um, the cooling fans to make sure people don't get overheated and we have our uh, cooling station um, for more lights, to rent more light towers. Um, and things of that nature for events that are moving forward. This would take us through the events already scheduled through the end of August, with the exception of the other one, um, that's the second um, appropriation that we're asking for teams on the light, but for uh, salsa, for um, music, uh, Polish Fest, to ensure that we have um, everything that we need to make sure that we have our controls in place for transportation to um, get handicapped or disabled people from parking lots into the festivals or closer into the festivals. Um, that was the purpose of this particular one. Any questions? Councilman <clears throat> Lugo? Yes, now you just spoke about uh, transportation for seniors because I didn't see that in Washington Park. Or the rhythm of blues where they were transporting seniors to their cars. Correct. Um, so my constituents with no idea bring up the security in the park in rhythm and blues where I parked was by the pool. And it was security out there. I don't know who security it was, but I spoke to them about it being so dark walking to the pool area. There was children out there playing in the dark. But there was a lot of us walking through that park and it was dangerous and not one police officer nor security, which I really didn't see a lot of police officers. I seen security, I'm assuming that's who they were, but they were geared toward the stage. I spoke to one of them about it, just asking if there's security, watching the people out, and they just kept walking like I was talking to them. They are guests. And I don't use that I'm a council person for nothing. Because I wasn't treating like they treat everybody else, mm -hmm. but it was horrible on the response from the, because they didn't give me no response. They just looked away. But the security we needed, if it's going to be in the park, once again, it's on the 30th, it will be. And it will be dark when people leave, even if it's the vendors leaving out, that security needs to be throughout that entire park. The police cars, they didn't have that many out there, but the lights were focused on the stage because the lighting went out, which was horrible. But as far as you getting that extra lighting, that needs to go from everywhere that those people 
walking. They were walking to St. Catherine. They were walking in the dark. The grass in the park is not the best. So you walk, you can twist your ankle. Nobody's there. I know a senior that walked from the park over by St. Catherine and she couldn't see, she had a cane. But you do need the security and the lighting for that because it was very bad. So we, we do apologize for that. I'm on a cane myself and uneven walking grass uh, for anyone who has any kind of disability when you're walking is scary. Um, I didn't realize how dark that park is. Um, for example, Polish Fest um, in August. Koski is well lit. I assume Washington was as well, as well as we did have two light towers that the city owns. So when we did the walkthrough, we said, okay, so we got these lights on the side of the stage, you know, and then put the tester on to show that they were working. The uh, light towers had gone to be serviced in, I think, April, because we knew we were going into festival season. So we knew that they should be working. And we knew that the police, they have this camera thing that have lights on the back of it. So we thought, okay, funds are limited. Let's just make sure that we have these lights in place. But I also assume that there's more lights in that park, more like Koski than there are, but obviously there's not. Um, so again, that's one of the reasons for some of this is to be able to order more lighting to rent. Um, because we have what we own, and then we need to rent additional. Um, we recognize that we need more police and security guards at even the smaller events. We had no incidents, but if we had, that might have been a problem because it was a large crowd. I mean, it was a, a fairly successful event. Again, with no incident, no negative incident, um, but we want to be better prepared moving forward. Any more questions? Councilman, Councilman Orange. No, Councilman Winfield saying so maybe next year your budget for the park to maybe at Christmas and for you, uh, maybe they can put more lighting, but on a timer, because I understand when you live in near a park and you have all the lights on, you know, the people around the park will complain because I know the sun's bad. When they lit up, they want the lights out, they don't want to shine them in their houses so maybe in your uh, budget next year or before if it's uh, for park and recreation they can have more lighting but maybe that can be switched off at a certain time unless you're having an event so it can be time time control and that's my understanding is that at washington park there are some lights but they're on a timer and uh, joe rosado who does all of our electrical and lighting and stuff for us he didn't realize that they wouldn't be coming on for that night. Um, I don't know if they come on at all at night, but between the residents and the police, they prefer that the park go dark so the people will go home. Um, so that's something that I think is being rediscussed. And we'll see where they go with that. But for the event, we will definitely deal with it. For the day to day, if there's day to day, um, I haven't heard of people complaining about parks being dark. I don't know. Maybe they recognize that it's dark and that's when it's time to leave because the park closed at dusk. Um, but that's why we are for you to get more light for these events. Are there any more questions? Roll call, please. Francisco? Yes. Hill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Garcia? No. Orange? Yes. Bolaño? No. Ransford? Monroe? No. Salad. No. Also there. Next ordinance. Ordinance 22-0035, sponsor Mayor Anthony Copel. Additional appropriations ordinance for the department of special event, seniors lakefront event. Motion made. Second. Motion made by Councilman Moore, seconded by Councilman Hill. So for this um, ordinance, this is, as we've been trying to bring back all of our annual events and uh, the Seniors on the Lake was an annual event pre-COVID and um, the Seniors have been calling daily 
asking because of them coming back. And, you know, the answer so far has been what we're trying. We need more time to see if we can move forward with this event. Um, we, we don't have any funds for this event. And we are asking um, all of the council to please support us and bring this event back for the seniors. Um, it's like I said, it's an annual event. It's been out call. We have um, a lot of seniors that have come historically, so we send them information on what day they can start calling us or start coming to register. But once we get a certain number, then um, that, that's it. So we try to plan on about 250 people because um, we have it outdoors. Uh, we try to bring them in if it's too hot. We have it set up inside for those that may be too hot anyway. Um, but if it were to be a rainy day or something like that, we would bring them inside as well. Do you have any questions? I just have one question. Um, can you tell me why you didn't ask for this at the beginning of the it, uh, put it in your budget? Um, what was put in the budget um, got eaten up by some of the other events that come first. Um, with the cost of doing business uh, going up so high this year, and I don't think yeah, we didn't realize the high cost of everything, not just food, but you know whoever you're bringing in, uh, whatever services you're trying to offer, you know, the rentals of everything have, uh, those numbers have doubled and in some areas tripled. And so um, it, those, those dollars got not by earlier events. Um, and so then when we bought the big appropriation, they got denied it was in there, but the initial budget I thought we'd be able to stretch further than we were able to. Is there any more questions? Roll call, please. Franciski. Yes. Bill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. No. Orange. Yes. Bolaño. No. Monroe. No. no. Gonzalez. No. Motion failed. Thank you. Ordinance is on second reading. We have none. Ordinance is on third reading. Ordinance 22 0032. Sponsor Mayor Anthony Coulter, Councilman Lenny Franciski, Councilwoman Gilly Warren. Ocean Appropriations Ordinance appropriating certain monies received from the local fiscal recovery fund. Second. Motion made by Councilman Garcia, second by Councilman, I'm not still going to wrong, Councilman Hill. Um, yes, Councilman Garcia. Yeah, I'm just a little confused with uh, this ordinance and the other two. I don't know when we got. Yeah. I can't hear you. you I got a little confused by this ordinance and, and the other resolution. So we can we explain it. They, they go together. One's a resolution, one's the actual appropriation ordinance for the funds. The resolution explains how they're going to be spent. That's a fair uh, 3,000 foot view. Yes, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, does anybody else have any questions? On this uh, premium pay, I see that. Okay, so we asked the Chicago Health Department to double the concern that some of these people are in the but where it comes to uh, the one to five years uh, contract employees, I only see one employee. So who is that employee? That's uh, Diana, um, that's the director. That's uh, Diana. Uh, that's so Valerie Secrets is not a, um, a- Everybody else is a, con is a contract. contract. I thought she was full-time. Is, is, uh, uh, is a part-time vendor. So during our meeting, there was uh, Grant, uh, Council Master, Councilman, Councilwoman uh, Balaos, and our attorney were present and we talked with the mayor. And one of the things that we pushed for was to go ahead 
and include the health department employees on this since they weren't included on the last one. He agreed with the exception of the bonus would be paid out to the employees that were full-time contractors, but get a part-time bonus, if that makes sense. And so we agreed with that to make sure that they would get something from the bonus. I did a, some, did a, did a calculation and then and, uh, I said after I spoke with her to, to ask you for, for that specific data, how many who basically was working 40 hours and the only 40 hour per, per week person um, from what you want was, uh, was uh, Diane. Right, and we did not, the council itself did not do the calculation. It was the two, two attorneys, I'm not sure. Well, just I mean, I, I got the information from uh, our data and I, I, I shared it with, of course, with the Okay. So I understand about the calculation. I'm just trying to see. I thought that she was a full time employee. She's a contract. She meaning I'm sorry. contract. Okay, full time contract employee. You're about Diana? I'm talking about Valerie Stevens. She works. If, she, if she's an employee, she's she's she would be she would participate like all employees. But she would get the. Uh, this is only for. She came on right after Diane, which would give her the three thousand. But I see one employee under that. No. If she's a, if she's an employee, I guess. I don't know. But if she's an employee, she participates without. We didn't need to include her. She she was included so in the first. Is she in the contract or not? I'm sorry, I'm well, you know, she's me. not. Okay, thank you. I believe she's the full time. Okay, right. Thank you. So then I just want to make sure she wasn't overbooked. Understood. <laughs> Are there any more questions on this ordinance? Ordinance on third reading. Roll call, please. Franceschi. Yes. Bill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Oren. Yes. Alonio. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. Okay. Resolutions. Resolution 22-0007, sponsored council members Gonzalez, Francisco Hill, Winfield, Garcia, Orange, Polanos, Francisco, and Monroe. The resolution of the Common Council of the City of East Chicago, Indiana, proclaiming June 19th as observance of Juneteenth. So we Second. Motion made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman McCormick. Roll call, please. Francisco. Yes. Bill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Bolaño. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. Is there any old business? Councilman Garcia. Uh, I'm going to further on with a motion to add to the agenda two resolutions. One resolution, resolution amending the plan for distributing money received to the American Rescue Plan at the 2021 Park and Deposit in City Park Coronavirus Local Physical Recovery Fund 0176 of the fund 2022 premium pay program. And resolution. Establishing the city cash. Resolution 220008. Yes. I would also, I, I might do this on the, on the new business, but that's fine. We'll, we'll do this, these two resolutions. Um, if we can have a motion, that's your motion? Yes. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what the motion It's just a motion add to add them to the agenda. Oh, okay. okay. Hey, I have a motion to add resolution 220008 and also resolution, it's marked 220009. Um, motion made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Monroe. Roll call, please. Or is there any questions? I'm sorry. Are there any questions on the motion? Roll call, please. Resist. Yes. Bill. Yes. 
Winfield, yes. Garcia, yes. Orange, yes. Bolaño, yes. Monroe, yes. Gonzalez, yes. President uh, moves to, uh, to hear resolution uh, 220008. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Garcia to pass to resolution 220008, second by Councilman Mazzone. Resolution establishing a city cash change fund. Um, Bell, can you speak on this? Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. I'll go with city of uh, The city cash change fund is basically a fund where we use, there's different departments in the city that collect uh, money for service, like in the controller's office. In my office, we collect the dog license, this license. A lot of people pay in cash, and to make change, we need to have funds to make change. At the present time, different departments are collecting money. Uh, the discussion with the State Board of Accounts, they were recommended for better internal controls. We have the funds centrally located in the controller's office and we distribute it. Someone said we need additional change money. We would they would sign with us, we would give it to them. Because this fund is always supposed to, like, in this instance, we're going to have 3,000, so we'll always have 3,000 because we're making change. We're not, it shouldn't get less at all. At the end of the day, it should be 3,000 every time. So, with the accompanying page, State Board of Cons uh, is aware of the statute, and, and it also has a paid cash fund. What some departments have been doing in the past is using their paid cash to make a check go to the bank and then have funds there. But with so many departments, they were accounts recommends it's better to have return controls. The controller's office, we can, we can see what's in the fund every day. We can see if something's missing. And if any time the department requests money for change and they return at the end of the day or end of the week, it's short, that department is responsible. It's more than short control. Do you have any other questions? No questions? Roll call, please. Francisco? Yes. Bill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Yeah. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Melania? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Solid. Yes. I further move on resolution 220009. Second. Motion made by Councilman Garcia to her resolution 220009. Seconded by Councilman Monroe. Um, I believe Mr. Alvarez spoke on this resolution. Do you uh, do this have any questions? Roll call, please. Franceschi. Yes. Hill. Yes. Whitfield. Yes. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Bolaño. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. Any other old business? New business? Yes. Um, one of the things I'd like to go first on the new business, some of the Please make a motion for 220036. Councilman Orange. So moved to put ordinance number 220036. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilman Orange to hear 220036. Second by Councilman Garcia. Put it on the agenda. Any questions? Thank you. Roll call, please. Francisco? Yes. Bill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Melania? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. I make a motion to uh, pass ordinance uh, 220036 on first and second reading. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman <coughs> to 
to hear 220036 on first and second reading, seconded by Councilman Garcia. Is that correct? Yes. Council Garcia. Yeah, well, we want to be the uh, family. Yes. And I don't know if Joe wants to speak on this one or not. This is the uh, all these dudes right here. Okay. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Council Garcia. So, so I just want to thank uh, Mr. Salvi and Mr. Allen. Uh, I met on the phone with them. Um, they're very clear on their perception of the private issues that continue project from the past. I know I asked Mr. Brush. I don't know if you got that information. You got that information for me? I'm sorry, can you remind me of the questions? Uh, how much we spent so far? On Indianapolis Boulevard? Uh, at this point, uh, somewhere in Indianapolis Boulevard. Costs associated with it so far with design. It's north of, uh, you're talking about on the plant repairs or? Are you, the, the, it was all closed down a minute, two, a couple years ago. Oh, north of three million. North, north of three million. Yeah. I didn't get mad at the exact amount. Well, so we can, we can do that. I actually had that meeting for uh, what, what we spent in the past on that project. Um, he's referring to a water project from. Army Corps engineer, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can get to that exact number. And one thing I ask that please inform the residents as this project is going along and the businesses, because the businesses had a big hit last time. Yes. But please inform the residents that as this project before the project starts and how the schedule is going. But I think it's a good project that we need to finish. Thank you. Um, uh, I know you told me and I asked you, but can you repeat just so everybody can hear? Because we do have people that live close to Indianapolis Boulevard that are here about the closures. Uh, you're going to do each separate yes. uh, different months and things like that. So um, our plan uh, of attack is this. Uh, there are three different projects that I mentioned to most of you guys that will come in succession. Uh, it will be our project first, the one that we're becoming before you for the $50 million, uh, which is the replacement of the uh, water and sanitary sewer. Uh, that project is number one. And the way we're going to be tackling that particular project is that we're going to start at 152nd Street uh, by doing some repairs on it. Once we do the repairs on 152nd Street, then what we'll do is we'll use that particular street as the alternate route for traffic once we shut down Indianapolis Boulevard. Our plan at this point is to shut down three blocks at a time during construction. And at which point in time, once those three blocks are completed, we'll come back with the subsurface and continuously open those blocks up before we move on to the next three blocks. Uh, that'll continue on north, until we get to the 147th block. Uh, in that particular block, we're going to be doing construction at night. And the reason being is, uh, as uh, Councilman Garcia alluded to, the last time we had a project, we uh, negatively affected some of our businesses. So with us doing the construction and the 47th and part of the 46th, that little short street there, uh, we'll be doing our construction at night. We will actually have access roads to all of the businesses in that particular corridor. Um, and then we'll continue on down north to Columbus Drive. Um, what I've been doing since I've moved over to this particular role is I, I pray that everyone actually has Nixel. I do quite a bit of updating in terms of project uh, updates, uh, sometimes weekly, sometimes daily, uh, because certain things change. Uh, as well as I do uh, communicate with Steve Segura and putting uh, this information on all our social media posts, wherever you go. Uh, once that particular project is completed, which will be anticipated will take approximately two years, there will be a, a second project that comes behind to further enhance the Indianapolis Boulevard uh, improvements. Uh, this particular project is gonna be uh, headed up by the state. Uh, it is the uh, widening of the actual Indianapolis Boulevard. Uh, there are eight particular blocks that uh, they're gonna widen. 
um, as well as they're going to probably reduce the traffic in those particular eight blocks into a, a one lane on both sides and a center turning lane. Uh, with this, uh, the, the purpose of this is that, as most of you guys know, that uh, in certain blocks, the residents that live on Indianapolis Boulevard have to kind of park up on the curb or street corner to try to get their cars out of the actual street. Uh, this particular street project will eliminate that and allow them to park safely in front of their houses moving forward. Uh, and then the third and final project is uh, an in-depth project that will come in after both of these particular projects. Uh, and what they'll do is they'll do enhancements on the handicap accessible areas throughout the corridor, uh, as well as the final thing they're going to do for us is, and this is why this particular project, our project is so important, is they're going to come back through and they're going to totally resurface all of the pavement on, it, pavement on Indianapolis Boulevard. So um, again, I stress the importance of trying to get this particular project done. And the reason being is because there's cost savings involved. Because if we can get our project done prior to them coming in, you won't have to tear up that brand new asphalt that they're going to put down regardless of what we do with our project. So uh, as I had mentioned before, um, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, the infrastructure on uh, Indianapolis Boulevard is well over 100 years old in places, uh, as well as um, you know it's uh, way past the lack of any utility. Uh, so we've been fortunate. Uh, if you ask, uh, Ken Myers and Joe Wright, they say no, because uh, they're out there at least twice a year doing some type of point repair. As a matter of fact, there's a water problem I just noticed in the way in uh, on Indianapolis right there at the corner of uh, East Chicago Avenue and Indy. So those types of things will be actually resolved in this particular project. Are there any more questions? Yeah, you guys please give me a breakdown of what we paid in the past and what this project you know, you know, cost. And one thing, uh, the state spending is a four or five million dollars on this project. Uh, five. That's at the end. That's at the end. That's not this fifteen million dollars. Uh, the fifteen million dollars, and I believe I will hand it out the handout. Uh, the bid, the lowest bid that we were were interested in actually entertaining is somewhere in the neighborhood of fourteen point three million dollars. We're asking uh, additional $670,000 in uh, contingencies for our uh, potential change orders and any unforeseen. So we don't have to keep coming up here in front of you guys saying, hey, we have a change order. So that equals the $15 million we're asking at this point. Councilman. Yeah, uh, Mr. Selvin, we'd like to thank you all for inviting me to the meeting. And it was very well organized. Thank you thank all you. for coming. I appreciate that. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Francisco. Yes. Hill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Yeah. Orlando. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. Okay. Our new business. We're still on new business. I know Councilwoman Winfield. Did you have something? Yes. Yeah. I actually, um, I, I really just want to hear an answer by this because we used to sell beyond today. I left a message to the engineering department on a call that I made. Uh, Councilman Orange, I'm not for sure, but I actually was concerned. Um, this weekend, I rode almost by White Castle, and I noticed that the 39th block of Dusty, those terminal lights were sold out the whole weekend. So I did call. It went from 39th to the 38th block. Everything was lit fast. More so what, you, what the old Mark Fields used to get. It was lit down that day, but it was pitch black this weekend. If I may uh, address that, um, I, we do apologize. Um, the lights are working. There was no problem with the lights. However, the timer needed to be changed. As the summer moves on, Thus, and Don changes the time. Uh, we have to set it to a specific time for it to be turned on uh, in certain points on the first portion from the uh, gas station to, I believe, Kentucky licorice area, uh, and then moving forward on uh, <coughs> the actual, uh, it's a dust to Don as well. 
So we did check to see if there was a problem. There was no problem. We just readjusted the lights in terms of the time. Okay, this was 9.45 at night, quarter to 10. So them lights shouldn't have been out at all. They should never go out, period, okay. until they, the dawn. I can, so I can that's the dawn was not it. I can hear. And, and again, we uh, will uh, send out one of our vendors to double check. We didn't see any problems. They were on last night. Uh, we did confirm with a couple of folks that live along the, the corridor. Uh, if it does happen again, please reach out to us because uh, I believe Will Allen was unaware that there was an issue in the first place. Okay. Councilman Garcia? Yeah, Pete, just want to, uh, I know we appropriated the money for that emergency uh, messaging system or the, at the lights. When does that one start? Uh, hold on one second. Have we received that money? Yeah, or, we or received it. We actually received. We actually received the shipment. I think uh, last week. So we got the shipment. We got the shipment already. Got delivered for the Opticom technology that's going at the intersection. We received the uh, the equipment. Uh, we opened up the POs. Um, as far as like an exact start date, I, I would imagine that we can start installing next month. Yeah, uh, we, we do have a, a, a project that's going on that the same vendor is doing the installs. We've done the majority of our electricity, excuse me, electricity uh, in Western. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but we've been installing our city street signs, the lit ones, uh, like the ones that are lit uh, throughout the actual uh, city. Uh, at our major thoroughfares. Uh, once that particular project, there were 96, if I remember correctly, signs that we were going to install. So as soon as that concludes, we will start doing the Opticom uh, installs at those intersections, uh, as well as uh, it was suggested by the uh, vendor that we do a couple of test uh, cars. So we'll probably test one police car, test one uh, uh, fire truck, uh, as those start to get installed. Thank you. Councilman uh, just one more question. Uh, the lighting, I know you're talking about lighting, and I didn't ask you this at the, at the meeting. Is there any way you can give me an update on what kind of lighting is happening in 148th and Alcott, Magoon, Way? All these areas that are very, very dark, Ivy, the 40, the 43rd block of Ivy, 42nd block of Ivy, the lighting there is just not. Well, and I think I may have addressed this a couple of times with uh, Councilwoman Winfield. Um, th there are two separate lighting systems right. in the city. There are city lights that the city of East Chicago owns, and they basically utilize, they maintain. And then there are Misco, Misco light. Mm -hmm. So if you could, and I, and I, this is my first time hearing this, uh, send myself or Will an email with those particular locations so we can clarify if it is a NIPSCO, which I believe it is, a NIPSCO light, um, we can see if we can address it. Um, it's, you know what I'm saying? So what we do is you guys tell us and then we actually submit that to NIPSCO as an issue. Okay, we'll, we'll do a site visit and then if we need to increase the intensity, wattage or booming, just depending on what type of picture it is, we can submit a letter, start the process on we'll NIPSCO and never get those more or less. Send an email. Go ahead, yeah. folks, Anderson. Now, you know, I've been waiting on this for like two years now with Sunnyside. We never did anything with the line of Sunnyside. Trees are covering the light. I uh, rode with uh, the young lady to show her the lights at night, Dr. Julio also. It's been two years. The lighting is NIPSCO codes. I spoke of NIPSCO myself, and they told me the city had to pay more money if they put brighter light. It, so the the, the water intensity does increase, you know, that there's an increase in cost. I think the money, which I mean, which we don't have an issue doing, but we need to increase the, the intensity. We, we do that already. Um, when it comes to starting I understand. Um, if you're frustrated, uh, it, it, it happens with Mexico kind of throughout the city. Uh, I don't know whether or not they pick and choose which ones they address quickly, but sometimes they work fast, sometimes they work slow. Um, we'll continue, you know, to push this because I understand you have been pushing the issue for a long time. Uh, if I could suggest, uh, 
it would help us as well because we do rate on them. They don't they on don't us. Uh, so if, if the council would want to put a letter together, send it over saying, hey, we need these services a little bit faster. It's not on Will and his department. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's submitting the actual request. It's just that there is a huge, from their kind of standard, backlog of materials as well as um, work orders that, you know, it's in the pot. Yeah, it's, it's very important that you guys call it in, get the phone number, and also the block and street where it's at. That makes it a lot faster. Because so them giving the street name, they on the phone number and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this still takes its time. Yes, uh, I mean, it, it even comes to the fact that we actually meet out there on site and we'll show them the whole little we'll right letter. Um, that's what we have to do in order to start the process in order to when we actually get out. Um, but then it's just a process. That they'll, they'll give you know the reason why, but this is a process until they actually get it corrected. The, the letter comes up. Oh, so the, the, the letter that Stacy would request the letter be sent to the I know that Cameron just asked a report about the discharge of firearms. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with the state. I don't know if that it's just a symbolic for them. And I don't know what the state statute says on discharge of guns. But I would like for you to look into that to see if you can do that because since Indiana passed that law here July 1st that you don't have to have anything to carry a gun to the Wild West. It really and it's just really ridiculous. So whatever we can do on our end to, to try to minimize uh, the gunshots. Yeah, I think uh, I did see that. I have looked, been looking into it. Um, it, it. It seems to me there's a difference really between someone's uh, um, permissive, permissive carry versus discharge. Um, so, and I think that's what Hammond did is they used that kind of distinguished difference. Um, I'll look into it. It's probably going to be challenged in Hammond, but there's good. no reason why we already have one on the books. Right. So, and that's so, so we I passed it last year. Right. So, I thought there was one. Yeah. I don't know if it's exactly the same. It's similar. I thought there was one. I just don't know if it's as extensive as what Hammond just passed. Yeah, but I, I like I said, if, if that's the case, then we need some more teeth to the one that we have. If uh, possible, I know everybody shoots the gun off on uh, uh, New, Year's. New Year's a day and everything. But I remember years ago, Councilwoman Winfield, uh, they were shooting up and the, it came through her uh, windows. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, that, that kid got killed in Hampton like that. So if we can strengthen it, and uh, because like I said, now with this law, it's just ridiculous. Well, and municipalities in general are scrambling um, because of public parks. And you know, I know North Township is, is dealing with this too. So it's going to be an evolving issue. Um, it's all lit up on the list of serves that I'm involved in right now. So. There's something that comes up that we can use, certainly. I think also the one of the main issues is lighting. We need lighting. Crime watch groups, you start one, that's the number one issue. Good lighting in your neighborhood. So this is what I'm asking about the lighting throughout the city. There's a lot of neighborhoods that are very dark, and what you're saying, they just come out with the guns and shoot them and shoot them, and you can't see because it's so dark. So Council, Council Garcia? Yes, uh, we have a problem with people shooting in Chicago. This throughout the whole year. Our shot spotter information is information is inundated. Um, shots about to fire throughout, uh, throughout the year. As small as our city is, you know, like any I can hear any any guns fire in our, you know, you know, it's heard the same thing in Chicago, but that's the problem we do have in Chicago with people who are discharging their weapons in uh, in Chicago. Council Orange. And then I just have one comment uh, about the events and the it didn't pass tonight. And it's a shame because these are seniors that don't have a lot of activities. And if you were going to do one of them, that, that should have been the one for the seniors. You have to remember that you guys zeroed out the whole budget when uh, 
consonant threads was here. You see that everything. So it was everything was zero out, and they had to bring back everything. Then in November of last year, the finance committee lowered most of the budgets of all the departments. So even if they had it in there, it still wouldn't have passed because you guys had lowered the budget. I'm not quite understanding when you say first you want stuff for the people, but then when the stuff comes up here for the people, and this is not personal, uh, or they, these are activities that uh, people enjoy going to, they have fun at them, it gets the older people out of the house, and I'm not understanding why it's not being passed here. They ask them for everything and bring it up here, and you still don't pass it. Yeah, I'm just going to talk reference the budget. Um, I know there's some stuff that was covered in the budget, and the reason it was covered in the budget, it was under contractual. You know, if, if they've been listed in the budget, I don't think it's being problem. But when you list stuff as contractual, and there's no explanation, you know, and you're talking about millions of dollars, you know, how can we just pass, you know, pass millions of dollars if we don't know where it's going? Councilman Williams, did you have something else in yeah. your business? Okay. So on Monday, I received a call from um, five mothers from the 148th block of Olcott. Uh, they have been putting up and going through horrible, horrible situation. Not only people shooting guns, but you having young people walking around with rifles on their shoulders, pulling out guns, exchanging guns, selling drugs, and they have photo, video. This has been going on for years. Um, I'm well aware of the July 1st new rule of the state, and so are they. Uh, they reached out to me, so I feel that my responsibility was to meet with them, hear them at least, what their concerns want. And um, I made some phone calls. I did uh, some research online. I called the treasurer's department to find out who the owners of these uh, uh, these properties that are being rented to these uh, low lifes that are causing this problems in their neighborhood. These are working class people just like you and I. A lot of them are homeowners. They've been there for about 25 years. They have children that cannot use their swimming pools in their backyard because the kids are afraid to go out and play in the front or in the back of their own yard. This is sad, very, very sad. I called the chief and he told me, I told him that I wanted to have a meeting on July 20th at my studio. And I, I was waiting to organize that and call uh, Councilman Hill to join me. Uh, and uh, the response that I got was that he was already planning a community meeting on both sides in the harbor and in Chicago. Well, that's fine. And I think that's great. We should do it. But we have pockets of violence and crime in different parts of our city. And, and when it comes to anybody, but especially to moms, if you're a mom or you're a grandma and you see this happening in your neighborhood, are you going to stand up? or you gonna stay quiet. They're here today because they're gonna speak up. I told them to come. And, and if anybody knows when a mom gets mad and they're ready to defend their children and their grandchildren. So I feel the same. I went through the same thing many, many years ago when my daughter, my youngest daughter was young and we had that same problem. Only these people have it on their actual block. I had it two blocks behind me. Well, now my daughter's a police officer. And I'm glad that she is. But this is, I guess my concern is, is that we have to, as a council, I think that let's get together and 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 try to find a solution to help our, our different neighborhoods that have this problem. We need to get together and help them. I just spoke to Councilman Hill before the uh, meeting and I said, you know, why don't we, kind of show these people, show these ladies how to put a crime watch together. Is it too late? Maybe not, but you know what? I look at it this way. Anything is better than nothing. I've been successful with my crime watch. I'm not saying it's 100% peaceful where I'm at, 
but at least my neighbors talk to each other, know each other, and report every single thing that goes on. And I want to reassure these ladies that at least we have their back. They're scared and their children are scared. And put yourselves in their place if you've never been in this situation, please. So they'll be speaking uh, later after the meeting. Councilwoman, I mean, Councilman Hill. Yeah, somebody called me a lady. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Anyway, I received. Anyway, I received a call from one of my residents about the situation the other day. I immediately called. I was at the UCPD, spoke to one commander, but now I'm going to take a little further with that. I'm going to call them tomorrow and I want to schedule a meeting with the commanders and the chief. And once we try to set up that meeting, I'm going to call Deb and I'm going to call you, Maria, so we can meet with them and let them know exactly what's going on. I told him the address where everything was going on. So he said he could be watching. We're going to have to do a little bit more than just watch. We're going to have to, like Deb say, find out who's the owner of these properties and we're going to have to take action. She always called me and I always try to do what she asked me to do. And I, I did call right away. So I'm going to definitely tomorrow call the chief and the commander and set up a meeting. You know, and I don't want to hear them telling me this and that. But we all try to protect our citizens here in the city of Chicago, especially not just the weather. So you think we're going to work together on this, Dad? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll push back. Councilman Garcia? Yes. Uh, Ms. Jones, if you take a look at that law and let us know, because I know you know you can't carry still in schools and going in buildings right. and stuff right. like that. On um, the business owners also could, could sign each other. Private say, businesses, no, yes. They can't. And there's I know you just mentioned the government buildings, but there's also argument right now that you should be able to carry in any government building if there's not a court. So that's being argued right now as well. It, like I said, this is evolving. It's every day there's another topic being debated. So, um, yeah, and that's maybe we could help our business. So, if we can't keep telling you, put a sign up, no one can allow when we start now. But, uh, straight kind of still want to do it by me speaking. You know, they had a sign, and talk to them, and maybe we want to try to protect them. Yeah, this is going to be a it's. Yeah, I got, couple, hot, I got a couple calls that there was somebody carrying M16 in and out of the car gas and stuff like that. So that's the time we live in now until it gets changed. Can I read this? It's a comment from East Chicago. It's, it's oh, just about, it was dated on July 3rd. It was a, a woman that put be safe neighbors on 139th and 140th blocks of Alma Deodor, just seen a young man walking on the street with a long rifle. Don't know what kind, not the first time I've seen him, but definitely be safe aware of your surroundings. This is sad. That's all I got to say. <coughs> Would you? Yes, I wasn't finished at it too when I had spoke, uh, but I would like to have the clerk's office, they would send a letter uh, to NIPSCO. It's concerning about the lighting, so we can get engineering, is that what you want us to do? We're going to really look forward to this for you. For uh, that would be up to you. We would need All we would need to do is we have two emails that we use okay. to go to the departments that handle our particular uh, uh, situations. Uh, I mean, we should forward that letter to the address that he has. But the second one uh, is the other issue that I wanted to speak of. It was something that was on social media. And it was from a resident that was raised here that was from East Chicago. His name is Lloyd McKeithen. He's a living history about to turn 96 on July 20th. He may be the last living Tuskegee Airman in, uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. He's one of the dwindling number nationwide. They want the family wants to celebrate his birthday, this American hero's birthday, with the birthday card shower. The Tuskegee Airmen were the first African American military aviators in the United States Armed Forces. The name also applies to the navigators, um, barriers, mechanic instructors, crew chiefs, uh, nurses, cooks, 
and other support personnel who serve. We are accredited for completing 1578 contract missions. And I know Robert Garcia is very familiar with this, what I'm saying. But the key that entered the aviation cadet program of the Tuskegee Air Army Airfield in February 1945. Over his long military career, he rose to rank of colonel. He retired from the United States Air Force August 1st, 1979, after over 30 years of military service. He was the last Tuskegee Airman to retire from an active duty. His family was asking that as many people that they can get to send this man uh, birthday cards in honor of his amazing contributions to the country and celebrate his 96th birthday. We, his family, would like to ask people far and wide and to shower him with birthday cards and notes. Also, drawings from children would thrill him and make his special day. This man still tells the story of being a Tuskegee Airman. And to this day, he's actually wheelchair bound and he lives in a senior facility in Dallas with over 85 100 flying hours. He still remembers everything. And they just want to ask if people will send him cards. So what I'm requesting, if it's okay with my colleagues, if we could send him a letter uh, just wishing, congratulating him and wishing him a happy birthday. Since he is from East Chicago, I know Gil Orange, you know the family, they uh, grew up in Sunnyside. His, his granddaughter grew up on Gil Street in Sunnyside in the Keaton family. But I think he would be excited to receive something from the East Chicago City Council being from East Chicago with our signature sign. Thank you. And I do have the address to forward you. I have the address. Uh, I've seen an article myself and I was going to forward him a letter on behalf of my office. Just the same. Thank you so much. Stacey, we need to make a motion to uh, send a letter. You don't have to make a motion. You can just request a letter. I was, yeah, that's what I was requesting mm -hmm. that you send a letter from the council. Will do. Thank you. Councilman Orange. Uh, when uh, Councilman Medina was on the council, when uh, Clark Medina was on the council, he uh, sponsored an ordinance about nuisance uh, building and that the, what the uh, city could do if this is a continual problem and if even taking the property from the landlord. I don't know if you remember that, uh, Clark Medina, but uh, the only way it can be used is that the residents have to continue to call on that particular address. If you don't call and make a, a report on that address, there's not much you can do to those landlords. So my advice is to continue to call. If it's 4,900 uh, Alcott, then continue to call and say, hey, do we see guns, we see people out here and stuff like that. And then that way, this could be forwarded to the courts and that, that a property can be taken from them. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm just saying you, you got to have a record. It, it, I know it's, it's uh, hard when you try to raise your kids amongst providers, <coughs> but you got you to gotta have something for the city and the, uh, the building department and the uh, court to be able to work with. Of the day say, well, nobody ever called us about it, which I'm sure you guys have. But I'm just saying, that's the only way you're going to uh, fight this problem. Do we know how many calls it takes? Hold on a second. Hold on one second. Councilman Francisco. Yeah, I just want to say, and kind of piggyback what uh, Councilwoman uh, Gilda uh, Orange said, and it does work, believe me. I had one in my district on 149th in the way. It was a big apartment uh, renter's unit. Nothing but problems, and I did did the same thing. Make sure you tell the homeowners to constantly call. And finally, they did shut down the building, and it is still shut down today. It's been shut down for already over three years, so it, it does work. I mean, it, yes, you just gotta make sure you're calling, and you know they'll get into with the building department and uh, work with the police department to, to shut it down from the landlord. So. Councilman, this is my I'm gonna call. I heard that there was a certain amount of calls. Yeah. Councilman Hill. Yeah, it's, I think they told me about four or five. They get four or five calls. Oh, on, 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 I, had, I had two of them on my block. And I constantly called, I 
traffic call. <coughs> they had a meeting with the landlord and told him if he doesn't stop, they're going to revoke the tenant license. And he has stopped. So he does, like Councilman uh, yeah. the Professor, <laughs> the Prince said, it does work. We just got to continue to call. Councilman Garcia. Yeah, um, it does work. It happened to me on two locations. I don't know if there's a number of calls they got. I know the state law works. It's kind of a nuisance that backs the city, back, that backs with the city. Uh, but it does work. Um, what I did in those two areas, a lot of times you got residents that don't want to call. They're scared for retaliation. So a couple of times I said, just call me, I'll call the police. So in those instances, they call me, I call the police. Uh, it got to so many calls, and it depends on the call they got um, and the times and stuff like that. But they called the, uh, the landlord up, brought them in the office, they showed them all the, the calls on that building. And then the next thing was we got the health department and the building department that's going to do the inspection, but it does work. Um, if you got somebody you work with, you call Debbie, you call me, I'll call the cops. I know a lot of times people are scared of retaliation here, but you call us, I'll call the police. <clears throat> Anything else in the new business? I, I do have um, one thing is just going back to uh, the 4th of July and fireworks and how much fireworks. And I know that um, we can't really enforce uh, fireworks because people are allowed to have as well to set up fireworks. But the biggest problem that we saw this year was fireworks being uh, set off and then not getting clean up, and especially in our parks. Edward Bell Park, um, Washington Park, it was a, basically a dumping ground. And so um, one of my residents was gonna come and speak because he was cleaning up his yard um, that for days, gutters, his roof, his lawn, everything. And I think what we need to focus on next year is not so much the fireworks, but the cleanup, because if you're cited for dumping or if you're cited for, you know, um, well, dumping or the garbage or just, there's no fireworks in the park. I mean, it's displayed, a citation just for that. So we need to, to really move on that next year before <coughs> um, this happens again, because it was a mess on all the parks. Um, anybody else have any new business? Um, before I forget, I just want to wish Councilman Milanios a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then we'll start with um, public expression. Uh, the first one is Elizabeth Palacio. Can you please come up, state your name, and you have three minutes. Good evening, Council. Thank you. Um, my name is Elizabeth Palacio. I live at 41 24 Wig Avenue in Curie, Chicago. I'm here for the safety of the concern of the citizens of Chicago coming over the Columbus Strike Bridge today. They switched lanes last week, it was going west. Now it's coming east. Well, last week when it was uh, last week when it was going west, um, it was pretty hairy, you know, getting. They're very heavy, hairy, especially for those that are on their phones in big trucks. They're not paying attention to the little person when they're so high up. It's very dangerous. Uh, my neighbor next door, she got hit and she started to pursue the driver. And she um, and she was uh, at her, well, uh, she called 911 and told her not to pursue. And so, because we, she didn't know what they had in front. Anyway, so um, uh, now this week it's coming in. And so, um, it's pretty dangerous. I don't know if you've been coming east today. Uh, I did, and also the curve is really uh, sharp. Uh, those trucks with the huge bumpers um, are dangerous. The tankers, especially, it's just one way going both ways. I wish you could both take a drive that way. Um, so that was my concern. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next one is Isabel um, Gaines. <clears throat> um, please state your name and your address, and you do have three minutes of Buenas tardes. Yo hablo español, so me voy a Um, 
Um, nosotros venimos, mi compañero y yo, porque tenemos una situación de jóvenes que repuntan en, en la dirección de vivir mi mamá, uh, 43, 21 Orca. Uh, ellos. She's here with the rest of the, the, the moms because they are facing the problems on the same block as 48, 21 Orca. <laughs> Um, esos jóvenes se juntan y tienen armas y pues todos los vecinos tenemos miedo que vaya a pasar algo. The young people that are living on that block, all, all of them are carrying our, um, handguns and they are displaying them and they are intimidating the neighborhood and they are afraid. No podemos salir, nuestros nietos, nuestros hijos, pues tenemos miedo que salga. They, They can't go out. They're afraid. The grandkids uh, don't want to go out because of fear of seeing that going on, and neither do the senior citizens on the block. Eso ya había pasado antes y se calmaron un poco, pero hoy otra vez están haciendo lo mismo y queremos porque nos den más seguridad para la colonia, la cuadra, la calle. This is not just something that's happened recently. It's been happening for a long time, way before. Three, three, years, three years, she said about three years, and they called to complain. And um, llamamos la policía, pero no más dan como unas vueltas y ya no vuelven. So she says that she they call the police, but they go around the block to check, and obviously these people probably take off, and the police can't find them, and nothing has been done. Yeah, man. Y pues queremos un poco más de seguridad, pues, de la salud, pues. A little bit more security in the area, police presence if possible, because they feel like, you know, they're stuck in their home and they can't get out. Tenemos, tenemos miedo. They're afraid. Tantas, ya la que ha habido con balaceras, there's been a lot of shoots. Entonces tenemos miedo que vaya a suceder algo en la cuarta cuando. So they're afraid that there's going to be a disaster, tragic disaster. Gracias. Gracias. Um, Maria Cruz. State your name and your address, please. And then My name is Maria Cruz, and I live on 4829 Orchard. I've been living there for almost 25 years. And last three years, I have a really bad experience with these kids. Shooting outside, I was outside, I want to afraid that my kids go outside and they don't know that these kids that they was shooting. Lucky one of my neighbors, they saw me and they let me go inside of her house so I can use my phone and call my daughters to tell her that the, the shooting was in the street. When I, we call the cops and the cops come, My daughter told me that this guy, he was shooting in front of my house. And I now, we have a meeting with Jose Rivera and he said that he's going to, uh, to help us, but nothing happened. The owner of this house, they know already, already about the problem. And they say that nobody for on that department complains about anything. They're all complete because there are the same people that, that had these kids. And like now, they start again carrying the guns. And uh, we know there is a new law that you can carry guns. But these people, they're not carrying guns like normal people. They have outside the guns, they come cars, they switch guns. It's something that we are afraid they happen again in shooting because we don't know. They're coming people for Illinois, coming and go and switching guns each other. And every time that we call the cops, they go inside so that the cops, they, they cannot do anything. And we've been calling the cops almost every day for this couple of weeks before. Like now is is something that you know we are afraid for these kids, for my kids. My kids work, they go to school, these kids they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So please, if you can help us. 
to do something. And we need more lights on the street, especially in that house. Because in that house in the night, the kids, they're outside with the guns. And when the cops come, they don't see anything because it's so dark. And you know, it's, it's not fair that we are owner, we pay the house, we try to uh, to do work in the house. And like now that the summer is here, we want to enjoy outside because all the winter we inside in the house. So we're here to see if you can do something for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Marco Ochoa. <laughs> Say your name, por favor. Say your name, address, and uh, you have three minutes. So don't be. Say my name, Marta Ochoa. Yo vivo allí en el frente en el 4822 de la Huerta de Nara, frente de esos jóvenes que yo a veces me siento ahí un rato con mis nietecitos y veo cuando sacan hasta la pistola y se lo pasan a otro y se la ponen abajo y me meto yo muy disimulada y con mi ayuda porque tanta cosa que ha pasado y el sábado a la una de la mañana este, oí que los balazos y cuando íbamos a la iglesia en la mañana que levantamos el garaje ahí estaban tres balas, tres casquillos de balas Ahí junto a mi cara, y, y por eso. Sí, ok. 48. 22. That's, that's right in front of the properties that we talked about. She says that she, when she sits outside with her small grandkids, she could see them in the, these individuals that live at these problem locations. They're exchanging guns and they pick up mm -hmm. their shirts, they show them, they exchange with other people. People come dragging in and they're just exchanging guns, and it's they're afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And that on Saturday, uh, there was a, a shooting, there was a shooting, and she found bullets uh, at the back of her home by her garage. Y pues también es la misma situación de ellas que no está uno ni a gusto ahí. She feels the same. She feels the same. Miedo, She's afraid. Same situation. Mm -hmm. That's why she's here. Just like everybody else, they're very, very concerned, and they're that's the bottom line. She's afraid for her to find And she's asking for peace. Yeah, she said she's been there for 30 years, and it's not it's unfair to be there for 30 years and to live in fear or to have to leave. They can't afford to leave. Thank you. <coughs> Graciela Campos. <laughs> Mi nombre es Graciela Campos. Vivo en el 48 veces de la Urca desde hace 27 años. Y está muy difícil aquí la situación porque no puede salir uno fuera por miedo a. Ellos viven enfrente de donde yo vivo. Entonces nosotros sabemos, ha habido situaciones en que se cruzan los balazos y estoy afuera. Y no, el otro día mi esposo iba a trabajar y él estaba en la camioneta y salió uno de, de enfrente y se dirigió a, a media calle y con la pistola en la mano. Pues mi esposo se asustó, pensó que era para él, pero no dice que no nada más volteó para todos lados y la pistola y se, se fue para su 48 location. Uh, she says she's been there for 27 years and that uh, her husband was leaving for work one day and one of them uh, seemed to be approaching him, seemed like that, uh, going for his gun, pulling it out. And her husband really thought that he was going to get shot at the moment, but it wasn't for him. I guess he was just displaying the gun with him, but he, she wasn't sure. But uh, it's basically the same, the same issues that all the other, uh, all her other neighbors are having. And again, uh, she's very, very scared and worried about it. Cuando llama uno a la policía, empiezan uno a hacer preguntas, donde vives, qué ropa trae, qué arma trae, nosotros no sabemos. Entonces, en lo que están en la información, ya cuando llega la policía, ellos se meten. 
And so she's saying when she calls the police, they ask a lot of questions, which I understand because I know what she means. But uh, sometimes you can't see because it's so dark, again, because of the lighting. Uh, and uh, by the time they come, these guys or kids, I've seen pictures of them as well. They, I, I'm sure they're 18 and younger. Um, they, they go back in the house. And then so when the police come, they can't do anything. Queremos que nos ayuden a, 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 a que pase más la policía allí, porque cuando llamamos como que pasa una vez o dos y ya dejan de pasar, y, y es lo que queremos más seguridad, <coughs> aparte que la calle está muy oscura, y queremos saber si nos pueden ayudar con, con seguridad. Right, so she, finally she's asking that because it's so dark, again, it, the lighting, the same issue, and that uh, she would like to see more patrol, uh, patrol cars going by there. Uh, more frequently than usual. I mean, whatever. I don't know what the schedule is there, so I'm just saying that's what she she says she'd like to see them go by more. Thank you. Thank you. And Angelica Ramirez. Y también estamos con la misma situación. Estoy 48-21 de la otra. Tengo 17 años viviendo aquí y es la misma situación de lo que está, estamos hablando. Queremos más seguridad y pues no es justo para que otros renteros lleguen aquí y nos saquen a los reyes que somos de nuestras casas. She's saying that she's been here for 17 years, 48. Sí, 48-21. No. 21. No, 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 and she just wants the same thing that everybody else is asking for more police and to look into this situation because it's very dangerous. She's just asking that, that we help and that the police do more patrolling. And uh, she just sounds like well, her voice. You could tell she's frustrated like everybody else is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? No, move, man. Second. Motion to adjourn made by uh, Councilman Garcia, second by Councilman Hill. Roll call. Francisco. Yes. Hill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Melania. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. We will. Thank you.